How's it hanging, toy fans? This is your host, Brock Lauer. And Kyle Walters. And here we are with Talking Toys episode 14, where we'll be talking about the pandemic on small businesses and collectors, as well as selling scams. And I hope you're all doing well, staying safe and secure, and being smart out there in this whole new reality we're living in. Just to start off here, we'll just uh, update you guys with some new toy updates. First on the list is... The new Marvel Legends Kingpin and Mysterio fan channel exclusives from like uh, Spider-Man animated series figures. And that's coming out relatively soon. You can kind of pre-order those on some certain sites as well. And also the, uh, they are making SH Figure Arts Endgame Captain America, Iron Man, Loki, and Rescue Armor Pepper Potts figure. So those are coming out uh, with the cap. I know that has like a bouncing shield. With the Loki, it has like the, the helmet and the scepter. Iron Man comes with the usual effects, and so does the Pepper Potts. Uh, Kyle, what did you think about those? Very excited about all of them. Yeah. But definitely that Kingpin looks very attractive. The Kingpin makes me laugh because I feel bad for people... Like, I know you bought some pieces, yeah. and I was just like, there's no point to complete it. It's like when they came out with the Colossus Juggernaut 2-pack, and you and me were both like, well, okay, we don't need to go back and get that Build-A-Figure. Like, Yeah, I do have, like, let's see, the head, the arm, and the torso done. And it's like, you can still finish it, because the difference between the Build-A-Figure and this classic-looking Kingpin is that he has purple pants, a blue tunic, he has orange vest as well, as well as that cane. So it's the same sculpt, but like I hear what you're saying, like different different aesthetics to it. And then I like the the best part about the new one is I like the interchangeable head. I think when that figure comes out, that's gonna be hot. Like yeah, even though Mysterio is my favorite villain, I'm more excited about Kingpin because the wave Kingpin came in as a whole, in my opinion, was garbage. Yeah, I mean for people who like different variety, it was really you know a lot of different variety of characters. But as far as you and me, there was like none we really cared about right but everyone from this whole like vintage style carded wave is i think every figure from this wave so far has been a home run yeah even if some are just kind of repaints still home runs that's the thing is like now am i gonna sell my mysterio that i have for this better looking mysterio i want both at the end of the day i love mysterio so i'm just gonna keep both because even if like I, I'm like still on the fence of like selling my the parts to my other one because it looks like I'm the one I am building looks like a modern like day kingpin. Right, and this one's like a this one's kind of like a, a throwback to the cl- '90s throwback classic looking kingpin yeah. where he kind of looks like from the like the the comic book and the TV show. So I mean, it's like if you did collect the other one, it's not crazy different. But what did you think of those SH figure arts from the Endgame line? Oh, they all look amazing, of course. Yeah. I, I love everything they do. It's weird. Figure Arts is, like, obviously, you know, I collect all the Dragon Ball Z ones. Like, that's one of my, my favorite. I think Bandai Spirits, I think, is one of the best companies in the world. Right. And the cool thing, too, is they scale well. Like, Bandai Spirits, the uh, the effect I bought you that you have on your Hulk that I got you for your birthday with the, the Smash effects, that's from them. Yeah. So it's really cool how, like, a lot of them really... They really scale well. Yeah, uh, the cap with the bouncing shield's different. I, I actually pre-ordered two. Oh, yeah? So they could face each other. With the two two captains? Two of the caps. Oh, really? Because you can, uh, just the different ways you can set up the display options. Right. They The, the cool thing about import companies is uh, I love when they do a lot of accessories. And as a business major, like, anytime you see a, a, a company, you know, whether it's Bandai Spirits or whatever, adding more accessories, it ultimately only helps the consumers because then people back here in the States, like a lot of companies will continue to add more accessories too, which is which is wonderful. Like like even just what we were talking about with the Kingpin, mm-hmm. the fact that the Kingpin comes with an extra head, yeah. I think is amazing. Even if you choose to never display it like that, All right. the fact having more, I would rather have more options than less options. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited about a lot of those. Uh, and then even I was—they were supposed to come on May. I don't know when they will, because the pandemic. But I pre—or I, I don't know if I ever showed you these, but I pre-ordered the uh, from Figure Arts. I got the uh, the Iron Man and uh, the Iron Spider from Endgame, and those look really cool. My Thanos too that you saw was from the uh, from Figure Arts. Yeah. 
yeah, I mean, SH Figure Arts does put out quality product. I, the only thing that's different I thought they kind of botched with the figure was the Iron Man with no snapping gauntlet and stuff like that. Like, you, like you have the opportunity, but you haven't, like, really capitalized on something like that. Uh, coming next is the Star Wars SH Figure Arts Mandalorian, which looks sick with the flame effects, and he has Baby Yoda. It's, I think, the most complete mandalorian figure i've seen and i actually i never buy sh figure arts but this one i think i have to buy because this mandalorian looks kick ass oh for sure i think um mandalorian oh I'm, i can't think of his name who who's the director uh, or who's the producer john favreau john favreau yeah needs to produce everything from here on <laughs> out because the mandalorian is a slam dunk and it's like it's amazing what you know you know what happens when disney gets out of the way and puts someone in charge of something that is a fan of the property when you have like a creative yeah. as opposed to a corporate person yeah because yeah. favreau loves star wars so it's, it's yeah. see him on that it, it it resonates well because he's doing uh some great things with it and then the fact that they announced boba fett gonna be in season two mm-hmm. they disney and you just showed me that you have a pre-order for a boba fett uh on a hot toy Yes. And that looks pretty cool. Very. I'm very surprised. Like, Hot Toys doing more Star Wars all of a sudden. Yeah, they, uh, the, the best, I think the best Hot Toy I've ever seen from them for Star Wars, what, well, actually, I haven't pre-ordered it yet, but I want to mm-hmm. for the Boba Fett, but the best Hot Toy I've seen that they actually have a back order on, because so many people want it, was they did a Hot Toy, uh, Palpatine in his throne. Yeah. But I know you and I are happy with the Black Series exclusive. I think that one gave us everything we wanted. Lightning hands, all sorts of cool stuff. But mm-hmm. they, uh, it is really cool because uh, I will always love Star Wars. And I know you will too, despite... Uh, Kathleen Kennedy not knowing what she's doing. I will always, yeah. I will always love Star Wars. Well, so I, it'll, it'll always have a special place in my I mind. always think you have to have those that league of fans that say this is right, this is wrong, this is what we like, this is what we don't like. To constantly, you're kind of like that customer service where you're showing the company that owns your favorite franchise, which you grew up with, because it does both still belong to the fans, no matter how many, I don't know how much Disney paid for it, but like. And when they listen, it's beautiful. Like with Sonic, yeah. Sonic was real. Uh, Elizabeth and I watch it. It mm-hmm. was really enjoyable. Yeah. And he looked like Sonic. Yeah, it like, was the fact that a company listened, and it was great. I will still say that like a lot of people compared it to Detective Pikachu. I still liked Detective Pikachu better, and I'm sure a lot of it has to do with Ryan Reynolds and the fact that I I care for Pokemon more than Sonic. Right. Okay. But it's absolutely incredible that like you had a studio that listened to people when people were like hey yeah that sonic looks ugly and then they're like okay they... we'll change it so it's like i'm happy everyone was able to support them right and then obviously if there wasn't a pandemic i'm sure even more people have gone to theaters because it was it was enjoyable yeah i yeah. thought i thought it was well, well worth my time i mean just with any company where you're like oh you have like a whole facebook page of whether projects or whatever or video games or whatever and you're like People say, I don't like this. I will not pay money for it. Just listen to your majority of the, the comments and what people are saying and then just change it where, you know, where a lot of people like it to a degree. And, you know, people, you know, you don't make money if you just listen to your fans. Uh, coming out of the Black Series, new releases came out of Star Wars the Black Series, such as the carbonized Han Solo, a Stormtrooper with new sculpt, a carbonized Vader, which will be an Amazon exclusive. It's kind of like a shinier metallic paint looking Vader. Vintage Luke. Clone Trooper in Kamino armor. Cardback Forlong and Zuckus, which will be Amazon exclusives. Dagobah 2 pack with Luke and Yoda. And you could make uh, Yoda fit in the Luke's backpack. Prototype Boba Fett helmet is coming out from Hasbro. And from Marvel Select, you're getting a Taskmaster figure with a shield bow and a little sword. Hot Toys is releasing a Spider-Gwen figure from the Into the Spider-Verse movie. That was a fun that was a fun movie. Yeah, it was. It was that was kind of a risk, but you know, it was a, a risk worth well worth taking. Uh SH Figure Arts, yeah, we we talked about the Loki, but he also I forgot to mention he also comes with the handcuffs, the muzzle, and obviously the hat and the staff. Uh Disney Diecast is releasing a probe droid, which will be $50 from the Elite Series. Hot Toys will be releasing a Darth Vader, Empire Strikes Back version. Boba Fett, which you just mentioned. 
and Clone Wars figures, Captain Rex. Uh, I did kind of like run through a lot of those, but like we'll start with Black Series. Did you see anything new from those Black Series reveals? Yes. Yeah. Okay. The the is for sure. The Luke with Yoda is a must have, and then the Carbonite Han Solo is a must have. The thing I don't understand about Hasbro, though, mm -hmm. is the first ever figure they released for the Black Series line, what would you say, four years ago, maybe? Four or five years ago? The first ever one they released um, it was an SDCC Boba Fett yeah. with the Han Solo Carbonite. And I just don't understand why they took like four years to re-release that Carbonite. Because I kept seeing on eBay where people just 3D printed their own Carbonite. It's weird that Hasbro just waited for an anniversary year. Mm -hmm. Nonetheless, I'm still going to buy it, but I'm just surprised they waited so long. Right. Well, you have these anniversary years where... Purposely sometimes leave figures for anniversary years. Well, which I guess I understand from a marketing perspective because like the the Luke Yoda pack, I, th I think it's going to be a hot seller. I think that's the, yeah. that, that's the winner. Yeah, because it's different. Where it's enough where it's different. Like, I, I might get it. I'm on the fence still, but like... You know, it's it it may be worth you know getting it. I I like the I just bought the probe droid. I found that in a while, but you know it's like where you have the anniversary editions. It's not necessarily the end of the world because they do have those new three D printed head sculpts as opposed to maybe some previous figures you didn't have. Oh, like that one Ray. Yeah. <laughs> where the where the BB eight was amazing and the Ray looked like garbage. Right. And it's like okay, I get it if you're like. You know, need to update some characters and stuff, but like that's pretty much all they're really making money on with Hasbro Black Series because this the the movies did not pan out very well, and those figures are not selling, and the only ones that they're selling are either retro vintage figures from the original trilogy or some prequel figures. Well, it's it's funny because out of the out of the latest line of figures, the ones that I love the droids, and it's funny because they're selling things like like the things that are selling really well from the latest uh, Black Series, for the latest trilogy as far as Black Series goes. Yeah. Are like the accessories, like like your porgs. Yeah. I love the BB-8. I think it's the best BB-8. Like these, and it's funny how they're mm -hmm. doing like little aspects like that. The fins are peg warmers. Uh, right. The Kylo Rens I think are selling decently well, but I mean. I'll admit it, like, I still love the Snoke figure I got from that line, but at yeah. the same time, they took what could have been an amazing character with Snoke, and I'll, I'll still never forgive the fact that they killed him in such a lame way. Yeah, I mean, like, I, I'm selling my Snoke figure. I, I don't know, I'm just selling all my prequel trilogy figures, because I'm like, except maybe, like, that one Kylo Ren figure I have, but... It's just, it, it didn't pan out the way I liked it, and I just said, you know what, I'm just going to sell them, because one, it, I cleared out a lot of space on my shelf, but two, like, if I don't enjoy the film or the characters, I'm not going to buy the figure, you know? Right, plus, like, some, like, I, mm, without, I don't want to spoil anything for any of anyone who's not seen it, but, like, some of the characters are just, like, I don't know, disappointing, or even some of the writings disappointing. Like, I think, I truly think Adam Driver is a good actor. Yeah. No, well, it's not the actor. I think fault. he just, like, Kylo Ren had moments where he was really good as a, the character, and then there were moments where I was just like, God, I don't care about Kylo Ren. Well, it's not the actor's fault. It's more, I think, of just the director's, Kathleen Kennedy, Disney's pressure, and it's the writers and directors. I mean, if you see a bad Star Wars movie. It's because there's not a lot of creative freedom because there's always somebody looking over your shoulder. Nobody can do their job right, or I could say it, or feel comfortable in a job environment if you have somebody always looking at what you're doing. That's that's uneasy. Even it doesn't matter what profession you have. If you have somebody over your shoulder constantly monitoring you, it it's it's not gonna turn out well. And and it's it's weird too because like some of the best movies like like Citizen Kane. Yeah. It's funny how Hollywood was mad because they couldn't hover over... I can't think of his name, but they couldn't hover hover over the director's shoulder yeah. because he said the only way he would come from plays to Hollywood was if they just backed off. And I think sometimes... Like, I understand when they make films. I know these studios are investing lots of money. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, like, sometimes you've just got to trust people. Like, and I think... Well, I think a... I think that's why the the Christopher Nolan trilogy was so wonderful right. uh, as a whole was because 
We let him do his thing. Yeah, and they probably saw the dollar signs too. Be and, and Warner Brothers just because the cool thing about DC is not obvi- obviously not every DC movie has been amazing. Some have flat out sucked. Mm-hmm. But Warner Brothers as a parent company, sometimes like when they start to see the dollar signs, it seems like they they sort of they sort of back off. Well, that's kind of funny because Warner Brothers. You make a good point there because Warner Brothers lets people do their own thing but that doesn't always pan out like you look at the snyder dc movie universe with like suicide squad and batman vs superman where those films they but, gave too much freedom to them but they didn't like a missing thing was like they didn't have like a kevin feige to connect them all and make them like yeah like, co- like that universe more coherent through yeah because like down the road you know suicide squad had like i loved to see deathstroke at the end that was cool and then i i think he did a solid job. I think Snyder did a solid job with Watchmen. Mm-hmm. So it's like sometimes it's like it's like a hit or a miss. All right. But I know even like one of the things too is they I DC. Uh, it's kind of funny because DC know I feel like when DC takes risks, like when they did their Shazam and their Wonder Woman figure or Wonder Woman movies. Yeah. Those. You and I both love both those. Amazing. Right. Wonder, Wonder Woman 1984 is going to be amazing. But I find it funny how they kind of... I've noticed that when they take risks for a couple movies like that, yeah, they follow it up with putting a Batman movie in it. Because they know Batman is like... They know they know if, heaven forbid, if they if a movie didn't do well, they know no matter what, people will go see a Batman movie. I think every decade they're trying to put because Batman together. I, I, I was, that's like their plan. Because like, that was pretty similar to what... Speaking of Bat- Batman, though, I'm I'm genuinely excited about this new movie. The only thing I worry about is they're cramming so yeah, many villains for a first movie. Which, unless your name is Bruce Tim and Paul Dini, you can't really cram a lot of villains into us. Like they they did it amazing right. with what was that episode, The Trial? Yeah. Like they did amazing with all those characters in one episode, and they covered so much in 30 minutes. Yeah. But some directors, when you do too much, you get like, you and I both liked Spider-Man three, but at the same time they did like. San- there's always an over. Like you have those movies where there's like too many. Yeah, like like Sandman or something. Like I'm, uh, exception to Avengers, but that's different. But- right, but like Sandman, Venom, and New Goblin. Now don't get me wrong, that's one of our I know my, our bigger biggest guilty pleasure movies because we still like it and yeah, it was still, still like it was it. still good. But at the same time, if they would have just focused on like just a few villains, or even like uh, even more so, was the, the Amazing Spider-Man two. There was a couple good scenes, but for the most part, you're just like, wow, they ruined Electro. Yeah. Like, and Jamie Foxx is a great actor, but they yeah. they, me- they messed up Electro. Or wow, you know, what what's his name? Uh, Harry Osborn is not the Green Goblin. What are you doing, people? Yeah. Moving on. What McFarlane Toys is releasing is a new Spawn Kickstarter figure. Uh, it's actually kind of multiple figures because there's a classic version which comes with a rifle and necro sword, a modern version with Al Simmons' head, an artist version which is black and white with a screaming head, artist proof. And the box will be collectible and resealable. And there's you can also get a three pack of all three. I think each one's $40, and there's an $80 version that's autographed by Todd McFarlane himself, and all come with the rifle and the necro sword. It is last time I checked, it was around 2.5 million people that were in on it to buy. Um, it's probably more than that now, and they needed three million. I'm sure it's probably reached its like its uh, quota, and it's a seven-inch figure. So, did you see that? I did. I um. I think it was from a business perspective. Yeah, because they keep throwing stuff in. <laughs> it was it was ingenious because at the end of the day, Todd McFarlane, he has more than enough money to fund it himself. Yeah. But you know why not do Kickstarter? Because Kickstarter will take a percentage, and then you get to keep the rest. And like, also, I think the funny thing with Kickstarter is. I, I understand why he put it through Kickstarter, not just from a monetary perspective, but because I'm sure he wanted to see that, like, hey, would people still, you know, give a shit if mm-hmm. I tried to do a whole new, if I just redid these figures with 
updated articulation and it turns out people are like yeah like we want that now because yeah his mortal combat spawn which i'll admit it i want i still have not seen it and it's been sold out a lot of different places a lot of different websites yeah but the mortal combat spawn i think looks cool as well i've never read spawn i really want to see the i really want to watch the spawn anime series yeah from the late 90s with uh with keith david because mm-hmm. they said that they uh who's the voice of goliath yeah todd mcfarland like they kind of modeled it to be really dark after um batman animated a few yeah. years earlier and they said they uh but obviously it, it was you know todd mcfarland i guess right off the bat he wanted you know it's a very gory scene i forget what it was but he said he wanted the audience to know that, like, hey, this isn't for kids. Like, and right. he, he actually, I, I didn't know this, but I was watching something. I'll have to post the video on your Facebook eventually. But I was watching something about Spawn the Animated Series where Todd McFarlane said that uh, he was the, they were the first ever show on HBO to have all the, the, the bullet, like, like the bullet dashes for, like, you know, like coarse language and, like, nudity and right. all this other stuff. And I want to see it. It, it's, I think it's only two seasons long, but it's but, supposed to be really good. So I, when he said he was going to do the Kickstarter at Toy Fair, I was like, those are going to sound like bonkers. Well, like, if you're really big into Spawn, that's, like, the Spawn figure to have. You know, like, that's the pinnacle figure to have because he created Spawn. But he's, like, offering, like, alternate heads and, and like, resealable packaging. And, and also, like, you could get a three-pack of all three and multiple heads and accessories and he's willing to autograph it and stuff like that so that's you know that's pretty cool i mean you gotta admit like that is probably the spawn figure to get if you're like huge into spawn and going into lego uh new harry potter sets were revealed by lego uh barnes and noble exclusive hedwig set it's just a kind of a big hedwig uh where he's like holding a letter it has a crank where you'll be able to move his wings up and down There'll be a Privet Drive set with the Dursleys minifigures. The blue car, and it'll have Harry, Ron, and Dobby as well. And the Burrow set, which will have Harry, uh, Fair Greyback, Bellatrix, Ginny, Arthur, Molly, Ron, and Tonks as minifigures. And they'll also have a Grop set, which will have Harry, Hermione, Umbridge, Centaurs, and of course Grop. Um, I'm really excited about these. Set. I was gonna say this is this is all you, my friend. You know, uh, like, the Hedwig, from my perspective, looks the coolest. It is, and that's the Barnes and Noble exclusive. Assuming Barnes and Noble's with us when these things when, when this that comes, comes out, out, my friend, you gotta you gotta just get right there and oh, get yeah. a set because uh, you know I think that's gonna be the hot set. Well, they Lego made a decision, or the, I think it was Lego. They they're just gonna release Harry Potter sets every year, kind of like they do with Star Wars because it's such a big property. They want to keep the license. They have to. Do something with the license after so many. Yeah, because remember the toys that made us were uh, Hasbro acquired the license when they bought Kenner. Yeah. And they didn't release any Star Wars product right. because Lucas kept delaying releasing the movie, which some people think was just George Lucas's way to get his license back. Right. Which is smart. And then Hasbro was like, "Oh crap! Like we want our light. We want that license." And they eventually got it back. But that's why, like I personally, I think like with the Black Series, for example. That's why they constantly release new figures every year because Star Wars is such a money maker. Right. They don't want to lose their license. Yeah, and I'm excited because all these sets are new. Because like the Burrow set, I'm not gonna get because I already have a Burrow set from 2007. Right. So, but this is just an updated version for you people that didn't get it the first time it came around. Now, also other sets are the Rumor Requirement, which is Harry, Luna, Hermione, and Death Eater Dummy. And the Astronomy Tower set, which is somewhat new, but kind of also a remake. Uh, Astronomy Tower set with Harry Ron, Luna, Slughorn, Neville, and Lavender Brown. And, you know, like with Harry Potter, the, the owl, I like the owl. They're doing great things with Lego, Kyle. I mean, it's like they, they're making the owl with the movable wings. Uh, did you see those the, those pictures of, like, the Star Wars helmets that Lego's doing? Like, they're modeled helmets. They're making like collectible things now, like where. Oh, they're they're smart. When I, I'm sure I know you've seen the the toys that made us about Lego. Yeah. How they built the company up, and then when the company was struggling, how they knew to just like how the family knew that we should get out of the way and we should let someone with a little more business acumen run right. it. And then that new guy that came in from somewhere in Scandinavia, yeah. how he put. Uh, 
parts X, Y, and Z into play, and then now they're killing it. Like from an outsider's perspective, I will admit there have been some there's some Star Wars Legos, for, even for me, or some other things where they did like the Simpsons Lego set. Like Lego is ingenious, and that's why I think it's uh, one of the funny things about Lego is what was it their first 20 years or so they had a monopoly on the brick market yeah and then somehow they could not get it re-upped and then that's why you see things like mega blocks who's made by mattel and then nano blocks now which i think are made in japan and right and but lego will always be the original and i think lego will always be the fan favorite because lego has so many is doing so many good licenses like the fact too that they they took the like I remember at one point they did a, like a life size BB-8 in Lego form, which is yeah, awesome. Well, like, and the the eighty nine Batmobile. Yeah, but, I just didn't want to justify spending that kind of money. Right. Well, like they do, they one they care about their consumers because they'll be like, well, we haven't we haven't released like let's say a Privet Drive. I missed out on that one because that was like a very early set from like the second movie. But they, so that'd be what like oh three oh four. That would be like oh two. Ooh. So now they're like, okay, we're going to give me an updated one, which is way better than like the one from 2002. But not only like, okay, if you, even if you missed out on like one set here, like the Burrow set, like if you missed out on that one, here we're re-releasing it. Because, you know, they, like, oh, if you missed out on that one, here you could get this one. But also like, even like they're doing things for collectors where they're kind of becoming a collector market where they're like releasing those Star Wars helmets where they have like the Stormtrooper and, like, I always see the Boba Fett one that's sold out because everybody wants that Boba Fett one. No, of course. Forever a fan favorite. Yeah, because, so, like, everybody wants that, you know, they want the collectible collectability of that with the helmets and stuff. So that's cool. And also LEGO released a new haunted house. Check uh, photos of everything we mentioned on our Facebook page that's Talking Toys on Facebook and YouTube. If you have trouble finding the channel on YouTube... Type in Talking Toys EP. You should find out all our previous episodes as well as our new shorts we've just released. They are Talking Toy Shorts. Just recently I uploaded one of a tour of my collection and uh, Different Ways to Clean Your Collection is my latest short that I just released. Uh, we'll be obviously doing more of those shorts as uh, time goes on. Three are up now. Just kind of getting that channel moving. Make, please make sure to like and subscribe and comment and share on our Facebook and YouTube pages. That's Talking Toys ep on youtube or just talking toys on facebook your support goes a long way and we're just trying to get bigger or just every month and every year with every every episode and it's all thanks to you the toy fans and also if you have anything you want to comment or whether you agree or disagree with us please feel free to do so in the comments uh, section of our videos all right so we pretty much the lego haunted house page or set i should say is is newly released which is like a big lego set that's a haunted house with multiple characters and it's not really based on anything it's just kind of lego's own little thing so check that out that's on our uh, facebook page and we'll also get on to our first topic pandemic on small businesses and collectors though it's affecting everybody it is we thought we'd talk about how it's affecting small businesses like comic shops toy shops and also as collectors since it has kind of changed the way we buy, the way we sell, and just stuff like that. I mean, I'm still picking up stuff from the store, but usually I'm at the store picking up like essential items and I just kind of just go to the toy store and just kind of check out what's there. I recently picked up the Probe Droid Black Series and um, I've mostly been getting my figures through the mail, whether that's on websites such as like GameStop, Target, or uh, Amazon. eBay! Or eBay, you know, you can go that way out. I uh, also picked up a Winter Soldier Marvel Legends as well. So, I've been kind of like doing a little online, but also stopping in the stores. I, I obviously can't go into comic shops and specialty stores just yet, but that stuff just opened uh, in Ohio where we're based. You know, you're not, you don't have to go out if you don't feel comfortable to, but... You know, if you, you know, stores are kind of like setting certain parameters and stuff where you could still come in. You know, you want to visit the stores to get out of the house, but also help small business out. How about you, Kyle? How has it affected uh, you, your collectability, buying stuff? Like, what have you been doing? Like, getting mostly stuff online, stopping the stores here or there? And do you plan to be rushing to the small business stores, like, soon, maybe sooner or later? I'm definitely excited about small businesses opening up. We have a lot of great comic shops in Northeast Ohio. Um, I love eBay. I'm an eBayaholic. 
So I got a few things off of eBay. Most recently, I got the Punisher Jigsaw set from back in 06 when Toy Biz had the Marvel Legends line. Mm -hmm. And I bought the entire, um, oh, I can't think, Crimson Dynamo wave. Yeah. And Crimson Dynamo is amazing. You got that from the store? I, I got Yeah, I got those from a combination of Walmart and Target. Okay. And I still find it funny that Hasbro released Spy Master before they released the Mandarin <laughs> yeah. in comic version. No one's heard of Spy Master. Everyone's heard of the Mandarin. But uh, Crimson Dynamo, I thought, was amazing. You built that one, yeah. And bulky. That's the first build a figure I've built recently in a, a while i don't know i i yeah you haven't been it's it, the it, yeah it's, it's been a minute because like we did we did that one and then i know i did the bane figure the first year we started really collecting from mattel back in the day um i but, still need to finish up molten man <laughs> i need one arm and i need uh an arm from call obsidian and i'm done with those two and i'm gonna buy the once i get paid or take a paper to sue i might get that big venom that exclusive venom yeah so um, the whole venomized wave i think is amazing i'm really excited especially the cap yeah i i think it's i feel like in the meetings with whether it's hasbro or funko or whomever mm -hmm. i think one of the things marvel is doing that's really smart is when they release a series like say the whole venomized thing yeah i feel like they make hasbro and funko like, like, they kind of discuss in the meetings, they're like, hey, like, you'll make money from this. And then, in turn, it'll help comic sales and graphic novel sales. But right. especially the, the Captain America, like, the shield with the, the symbiote yeah. gunk on the shield. Amazing. Well, like, so you've been pretty much online mostly or in the store? Mostly, uh, well, mostly recently I've been online, but before that I just... You know, you get that figure itch and you, you got to scratch right, it. Right, you see the one and you're like, well, yeah. there's less people in the store. And, and I like, want I see the nice figure. I'm like, oh, I have to buy it because it's like, I there's want less people in the store. Oh, yeah. The less whole... competition. Oh, for sure. The Crimson Dynamo wave I wanted so badly. And I think out of that wave, like, the Crimson Dynamo is amazing. Uh, the Winter Soldier is amazing. Right. Spy Master is cool. And you know me, I'm a sucker for, like, random characters has for releases that no one's heard of. Like that one, and then when I got Machine Man, right. that was awesome. Uh, so do you find yourself doing more online now than you did before? Yeah, well, I mean, I've always done a lot of online. Yeah, but... I mean, you're not doing as many um, imports, right? Because the guy who made your figure could have eaten it back. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm coming at. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, I love my imports. Especially, like, like you know, I built the Gundam models. So you're and not so... worried about the guy who ate the bat making reactions? <laughs> <laughs> who works for SH Figure Arts? Nah. Um, I know Japan, uh, Shinto Abe, their prime minister, he wants a lot of their companies to pull out of China as well. But right. that's a that's a story for another day. But I love I love Bandai Spirits. Any uh, figures you have like on order that's probably going to be pushed back now because of the whole thing? Yes. Um, well, name a couple. You're not going to name. I, I know you have a list as long as Santa Claus. Right? I have. Let me give me one moment, my friend. I'm going to just bring up. I have a nice little. Nice little list. I have a ton. I'll just read some of my favorites. Um, Super 7's Thundercats line. Uh, they haven't released it yet. Surprisingly, they got a shipment. There's prototypes from China, mm -hmm. and they look gorgeous. Another highlight I'm really excited about is the um, is Sentinel is doing a 112th line of Ronin Warriors, and I'm really excited about Ryu of the Wildfire. The only problem is... Like, they're $144.99 each. Yeah. And I love Ronin Warriors, but if they could have had that price, I just hope people really like this line so I can finally start getting some villains like Talpa, which I know that sounds like I'm speaking a, a different language because you have no clue what I'm talking about there, uh -huh. but that's a, that's a great classic. Maybe someone out there does that, or four viewers. Or... <laughs> that's a great classic anime series. And then there's another one, The Egg... Uh, attack action from Beast Kingdom of Gambit, the exclusive where he's in a Sentinel hand. I'm excited about that. And then there's a bunch of figure arts, Dragon Ball figures and whatnot. I'm excited about the the Avengers figure arts, Loki. Just so so many um, figure arts, Zamasu uh, in his original form. 
in November, but I think it'll be. I think a lot of this will be fixed, and I, I'm hoping to get some of my pre-orders. It's gonna be the uh, delayed. I mean, right. the Black Widow stuff's out now, but uh, certain things that like certain lines of action figures are obviously gonna be postponed, delayed. I mean, like you know, like that uh, Marvel Legends Stanley. I, I assume that's still probably. I mean, it probably will come in June, but you don't know because you don't know how many people are actually working at Hasbro to for that to come out in June or whatever. I think a lot of it is kind of tough to forecast because, you know, it's, we never had anything like this long go on. And I, I think it's just going to be delayed, obviously, by a couple months. Um, I suppose like a year and stuff. Unless, you know, certain certain lines said, oh, we're just going to postpone this till like next year. You know, it's like, you know, obviously there's not going to be San Diego Comic Con because that's canceled. You know, we're, I'm sure things will be released online based on what, will be released that was going to be released at the show now i think you know they'll still be like images and stuff will be released online and obviously if you want exclusives they already talking about like sdcc exclusives being released like maybe just through like target or maybe through comic shop distributors and stuff like that but i know like with most comic shops like right now they're not they're open but they're not getting new product right now because as of this recording you know it's like the 14th today comic shops are open but they're not receiving new toys they're not receiving new comics you know they're not receiving yeah because diamond i think is temporarily took like a hiatus yeah to, just because and but i will say when diamond gets back up dc i think is still I, I, yeah, when, distributing stuff because well, yeah when diamond gets back up they're gonna probably have to give out some overtime because their workers their, their warehouse is probably gonna be so backed up right plus i know like i know you and i the one comic Speaking of DC, the one comic we're really excited about is Batman The Continued Adventures. Yeah. That's going to be awesome. It's actually out right now on Comixology, but I want the physical thing. Like, that's just one of those things I want. Right, because it's going to be so cool. Right, like, you want to... Like you want to buy that. And, you know, it's the like... Fact that, the fact that Bruce Tim and Paul Dini, too, are still doing this stuff, I... Thank you, DC. Thank you. Well, uh, like, yeah, you know, they know a lot of people are going to be buying that, and it's like... Because we're coming up on so many anniversaries of it, you know? Yeah, like. And, it's only seven issues, so it's like, why not buy the physical thing? Yeah, and, and I bought, I don't know if I told you this, but I bought the Mondo exclusive, I guess, what would that be, one six scale uh, Catwoman? Yeah. Can't wait. I, that's supposed to come out in June. I hope that's not pushed back because I really Oh, want I expect someone. everything to be pushed the back. The Mondo exclusives of their animated figures sell out like that, mm -hmm. so I was like, okay, I missed out on the Mondo exclusive, Mr. Freeze, I want the Catwoman. And the Catwoman comes with... It's funny because their exclusives only come with like two or three extra items. But like to get another another one of her, her cat on there, Isis, Isis the cat. Right. And then another like interchange, the unmasked head of Selena Kyle. So cool. I can't wait for that figure. I, you and I will forever love Batman. Well, the funny thing is like, you know, they, they go from concept to prototype to mass distribution. And that's all disruptive. It just is. Because, you know, this stuff takes long... Like, you could see something, like, one day, and then, like, it may, from all that process to concept to prototype to uh, mass produ production to distribution, you know, that almost takes, like, half a year to a year max. Right. Assuming it doesn't get delayed. Now everything's delayed. But it's like, you know, I, I mean, like, for me, it's like, I still go in the store occasionally, but I'm only going, like, if it's, like, essential stuff. But I've been mostly buying stuff online. It, it, it slows your collector rate, though. It's so it's like buying stuff. Like, you're not buying stuff as much because not as much is open. And, but, you know, like, I've been buying stuff online just because, like, I found, like, a sale on that Black Widow. I don't, you didn't buy that one, did you? I have not bought that one. But I, found, I couldn't believe I found a sale, like, that deluxe Marvel Legends Black Widow I got for, like, 20 bucks. And then the one I found for you in Target, where it's, like, they're, they're everywhere now, but I guarantee yeah. that as things start to get up and running, they're going to be nowhere to be found. I also can't wait for the Walmart exclusive Black Widow. Like, it's funny because Hasbro, with all these exclusive Black Widows, and then the deluxe one, they're... All amazing. Like, I'm really excited about, like, all of them. All right. Even our uh, governor mentioned that one of our comic shops, Carolyn John's, on the uh, on one of his uh, coronavirus reports. But uh, And it's cool because, you know, they do a great, great job. You know, tip of the hat to Carolyn John's comic shop. Always doing good by their customers, whether it's a Christmas party we attend to, free comic book day, or even a pandemic. Because, like, they got the plastic up. 
They got the mask. They got the and their ma- their masks are like all like comic themed. Which yeah, is they're, super they're cool even too. selling masks. You know those cloth ma- masks. They have like little. Their prints are my favorite thing on earth. They got the little you know places to stand, so you're like six feet apart, only allowing certain people in. Um, they had like, to get by the pandemic. They had like the comic auction. So a tip of the hat to them. They're doing it right. Definitely got the exposure from the governor of Ohio. Uh, just doing everything right. You know, so you hope. A lot of shops do something. I mean, most shops are doing like the the six feet apart, the, the plexiglass thing, wear a mask. I mean, I'm okay with putting one on if I just have to run into a store. I kind of get it. You know, when you're in a store, whether it's a comic shop or whatever, you're touching things, you're putting them back, you're, you're looking at them and stuff like that. So I do understand the precaution where people are touching things and whatnot and have the hand sanitizer and whatnot. The, I think. What it comes down to is you can't lock the world away. Uh, allow people to have individual responsibility on whether they want to go out or if they want to risk it at all. And if they want to stay at home, that's cool too. If they want to go out, that's cool too. You know, because you get that choice. And also, stores are following in suit with that. You know, those parameters. Your shopping experience in a store is going to be different. How do you feel towards that? I mean, it's you know, businesses want to take precautions, and I'm fine with doing that. I mean, every business has the right to do what they feel necessary, but as long as businesses don't force people to do something they might not be comfortable with, such as wearing a mask, I think it'll be good. And those businesses can also have signs that are like, hey, like if you're excessively coughing or whatever, we might make you leave because right. you might make people feel uncomfortable, which is fair. Right. Because even without COVID-19, coughing excessively, you know, especially for people that don't cover their mouths, like I don't want that, I don't want that shit on my comics and stuff or anything right. you know and that's hard to, like you know a and, comic book it's that's yeah, hard to clean yeah you know, yeah, like yeah. you book. can't like like if, if someone calls an action figure okay you can you know as you know if it was an action or whatever you can wipe it down with the sandy rag but yeah you can't wipe a comic book down with a sandy rag or you know, I'm assuming the, it's in yeah the water plastic. yeah the water will destroy it right and it's like you know i'm okay with just you know just, just having to wear a mask just to you know look around a store for a little bit i understand you know everyone shopping is going to be different and I do think, you know, stores are going to play it safe, but they're also going to play it smart. And, you know, like, what else can you ask for? And as hopefully, like, not too many not too many businesses went out um, due to this whole thing. And I think this, if I think if it went on another month where everything was closed, I think you'd see a lot of stores closed. And I, you know, like, I hope Diamond, I guess maybe they were just closed themselves. But, you know, it's like, I hope they're not leaving shops high and dry. Because it's like, I think a lot of, like, companies the bigger comic companies kind of left the the shops in the dust a little bit by i didn't i didn't expect them to keep making material but it's like there's no like a company like diamond if they suffer is going to get compensated to do this thing but not the small comic book shops you know what i mean like corporations will get compensated obviously like diamond and stuff like that but not the small comic book shops quick thoughts on that Right, I mean, it's it was gonna be interesting. It just like I said, just without this whole pandemic in general, just how everything works out. Um, mm-hmm. Diamond, I, I I like Diamond, uh, and we'll we'll see what happens. Yeah, I mean, I just hope you're not gonna give out checks to small businesses. I get that, but it's like uh, you know, just, small businesses is, is different than a corporation where they're gonna have to do what they're gonna have to do despite laws and orders and stuff like that just because they're not going to be bailed out by anybody because they're more independent so but uh, before we get to our next topic selling scam i did want to ask you a question that's floating out around there in the toy community with about marvel legends do you think they should get rid of build a figures as a whole now and just make deluxe figures because that seems to be the case but before you respond it just seems to be a trend where it's like well we have a build a figure and then Six months later, we make a deluxe figure of the of what would of that build a figure, just a different paint apps, same sculpt and stuff like that. So, do you think they should even continue with the build a figures at this point, and just make deluxe figures? Yes, I do think they should continue with build figures because then you could the the one they came up with that can just be like a running change. Yeah. Because the build a figure is an incentive to buy the wave, and I want to make sure that like I get my money's worth for twenty well, bucks. Well, here, here, okay, let me paint you a picture because. I, I disagree with you, but I don't like, you know, I'm not like, right, going right. to claw your eyes out or anything, but 
Okay, here's here's why I think they should just go to Deluxe. Because they're doing it anyway. And two, if they did just go through Deluxe, uh, like build the figures where you just buy the Deluxe figure, you wouldn't have to buy certain figures or certain pieces from a third party, like scalpers and stuff on eBay to buy, like, pay like 20 some dollars or, or over $15 for a build a figure piece. And it'll take you longer to build the figure. And two, you don't have to buy separately the pieces to that figure. It hurts the scalping market, which resell of those figure parts, where it just really just kills the scalping market of those pieces, as well as like, if you didn't get a build a figure piece with your Marvel Legends, it could bring the price down of Marvel Legends, because you'd just be getting a figure. You'd think that, but remember the X-Men class, or remember those those X-Men figures like Storm? No build-a-figure piece, still nineteen ninety nine. I don't True, think they'd bring but that on the That's piece. like an exclusive. The what the Black Storm? Or t- Either or. Or like the Iceman or Well, which one are you referring to? I'm trying to think Any of them, like the Ice. Yeah, but they they had a build a figure. No. Oh, you mean the the, card. Red, the vintage, vintage card bag? Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm talking about like a Marvel legend that just doesn't have a build. I, I get what you're saying, but like that has fancy packaging. I like, guess. I mean, like if it brought down like like I'm I'm talking about like, I mean I see what you're saying. Where like okay, even if they didn't have the build a figure piece, they just make a individual figure with fancy packaging where you'd be paying the same. Right. I yeah. mean we'll see what. Happens. I mean like I'm. Like the Black Widow line, we'll just use an example. It just didn't have the build a figure parts and just came in that same packaging. I mean, I I think I don't know if they will do that though because they want to make sure that like if they put a character out that some people might be like an Iron Man will always sell, but a Spy Master might not always sell. Yeah, no, you're you're true. You're so right they want there. that. That's why they I do mean, the it's... build a figures because they want to incentivize you. I mean, yeah, you could make the argument of. You know, they would probably upcharge the uh, figures with fancier packaging and just keep the price the same. But I'm saying, like, I feel like they're going to make deluxe figures. But I, I don't know. I think they'll also make build figures as well because, I don't know, it's, 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 they're doing it right now, I think, to test the market. But I don't know if, like, because I think, like, if you got rid of the build figures, people would be able to cherry pick and get the figures they want. But also, I see what you're saying. That would leave more peg warmers. Lots of rose ticos, so to speak. Right. So, I mean, it's like, I, I, I'm i for the deluxe thing because I like to cherry pick my figures in a wave, but destroys the scalper market, which they're doing a great job. Like, they are really combating, like, Hasbro's really combating that with, one, they change their packaging, two, you know, they're remaking figures with, this, like, similar sculpts with just different paint jobs and stuff. So they're really just, like, they're smart Even about it, the too. the scalper market, too. And they're giving fans what they wanted, too, like with Storm. Like, when they're like, hey, we'll release the white Storm, then we'll release the black the, the black outfit Storm. All right. And then, like, just keep re-releasing different, you know, incarnations. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, Marvel Legends year in and year out is consistently our favorite line. It's, it's consistently the most fun and most easily accessible. Yeah. For the most part. Now, I remember they uh, the one X-Men wave with, like, the Wolverine with the Unmasked Head, which was, like, Toys R exclusive. Yeah. That wave's hard to find. I've only seen that X-Men 3-pack with uh, Cyclops, Jean Grey, and uh, Wolverine. Like, I've only seen that in GameStop, so I don't know if they're selling that anywhere else. But that's also another one I hope to get pretty soon. Like, I'm getting the Monster Venom, the Eddie, the Eddie Brock Monster Venom. But, you know, like, I'm selling my... The one from the build a figure of those parts now. But and but the Kingpin I'm I kinda still want that build a figure Kingpin because it shows like a modern version of Kingpin and then you, I'll also get the classic version. Right. But you know, I see like yeah, you waited and stuff. Like certain things like, like I waited on Palpatine and like you bought the early one and then like I was getting the new Kingpin, you kinda waited on the Kingpin, so it's like it, you never know. You never know if they're gonna re release or when they're really re-release these figures and stuff like that. And I think, you know, I think we both make good points in our argument there, though. Even though we somewhat had different perspectives. Alright, so our next topic is selling scams, and most of these selling scams occur online. I'm going to tell you a story that happened to our little Neotech group, where a kid uh, bought the Kickstarter uh, Jabba sale barge online for like $700, and the kid gave him the money through PayPal and stuff, 
but he never received the Joppa Sail Barge. And it's hard to find because it's like a super exclusive thing. You can only get it through Hasbro or maybe like a, a, a person that's selling them that might have them. Um, well, the kid never got the Sail Barge from this seller um, because apparently he was scammed. So the guy just took the money and never gave the Sail Barge due to the online transaction. However, the toy group Neotech Group, which stands for Northeast Ohio Toys and Collectibles Club, um, stepped in. They not only found him a Java sail barge to give to him, but they also gave him a like seven hundred dollars that he lost. Um, now I know like maybe some of you listeners will be like, "Well, who spends that much money on a toy?" Well, it's like if you're a collector and you need like a certain thing. You Plus, know. he saved for a long time. Right. So he saved his allowance. So right. He, so even though I've never I've never met the family, like he seems like a very good kid who's just ve- a very hard worker. Right. And then the, this this douche nozzle who's a tattoo artist from Cleveland just s- literally stole from a kid. Right. And like that's what we're gonna talk about now because this kind of happened in our little toy group. But you know, like God bless like the the members in the group that came forward and righted a wrong that someone else did, and not only gave the kid the sail barge, but they gave him his money back as well. What an awesome toy story, you know, not only in a group of, like, toy, from a toy and collectibles club's point, but, like, just, you don't see that kind of stuff really much in everyday life and hear stories like that. So what we're going to talk about, I mean, yeah, this guy just totally took advantage of a kid, and, like, you're really like, wow, how low can you go when you take advantage of, he, the kid was like, I don't know, he wasn't that old, he wasn't, like, a teenager. I think he was, like, 10. Yeah, he was, like, 10 or 12 or something oh like God, that, and yeah. he took advantage of this kid. And you're like, really? Like, and this guy, like, he had other felonies and stuff like that. Really? I didn't know he had other felonies, too. I, that's what I, like, read or something yeah. like that. But, like, this guy was, like, just a low-life scumball. And you don't ever see that coming, even if you're, like, you're shopping online and stuff like that, you know? So you got to be really careful what you're buying online and who you're buying from. And, you know, make sure like, if there is a background thing to read and what kind of seller they are from eBay or whatnot. I mean... Have you ever come close to anything like that on online, like a scammer or any? You buy online way more than I do, like from like eBay or something like that. There was one time it was just a Yu-Gi-Oh card. It eventually came, but it was just I don't know if there was a language barrier or whatnot. But the guy he refunded my money, and I don't know if it got lost in the post office or whatnot. But it was frustrating for sure. Yeah, I mean it's just like you know, it's like scammers. It's like there are people out there that take advantage of or are looking to take advantage of people like that and you probably know better than i do kyle like how paypal works like you got to pay the money up front before you receive the the item most of the time yes unless you have paypal credit paypal credit so you like were you were they with their credit card oh uh, with their credit card which i guess you're still technically just putting money on a card so but you can't, like, obviously, is there an option like, oh, pay half now, and then I get the item and I'll pay the rest or anything? No, no, no. no so you have to pay all of it, then receive yep. it. That's kind of, I mean, like, I get it to a degree, but it's like, that's so risky for the buyer, you know? I mean, I mean, like. Well, eBay has a number of ways to make sure you don't get, you know, just, you know, messed up. Right, and it's like, yeah, people, like, Neotech will come through for you if you <laughs> You know, or friends, or some somebody. If you you know, if the story gets out, um, but it's like, really, you're taking advantage of like a little kid, and like there are people out there and stuff, and yeah, like that's why I'm kind of like, when it comes to like eBay and stuff, like that, I'm a little bit more hesitant to buy because you don't know if you're buying from a person that's like trustworthy, but you could check up on the credentials and stuff like that, you know, like because you're. Buying something from a unknown person as opposed to like a, a place of business where like they have a customer service thing and whatnot. And granted, you can like flag people and report them either whether it's on eBay or Amazon or whatever. But it is like it's always a risk when you're buying online. I just prefer to buy in person just because I like to hunt things. But you know, it's like, mm, you know, you never know. I mean, that stuff can happen where. It's just a little, or like even like with me, with this, when it comes to online shopping, it's like okay, I've seen a bunch of internet pictures of a toy or a comic. 
But it's a lot different than when you have it in your hand and you're looking at it and you're turning it around and stuff and you kind of like see the defects or or something like that. I mean, do you? That's why I'm. I, that's why I don't buy comic books online because I'm like I got to see it in person and hold it and handle it and stuff like that. If someone is really reputable, they'll post a ton of pictures. Yeah. So that's why I buy comics on there. Plus, obviously, if it's slabbed in CGC, then you have CGC as well. You know, the, you you can zoom in on the the lot number for, and then go to the CGC website to just make sure it's real. And I uh, I buy comics occasionally from eBay, and I've found some some scores. Right. I mean, you got that one graded comic where it was kind of like broken. Now. Yes, that was the only one, and I can't remember what it, what the name of the comic shop was, but I don't know if it was Jersey or whatnot. Yeah. But yeah, douchebags put it in a Manila envelope, and I didn't discover it was broken till after the fact, and I should have did complained. It, but did it say on the site that it was broken? No, it, it broke in shipping because they put oh. it in a Manila envelope oh. with, with bubble wrap, and it's like, what kind of reputable comic shop does that? Like, well, you need to. Put it was that. like Fish Sauce Comics, I think it was. Fish Sauce. That's literally what the name was. I think so. Fish I, Sauce. I just Fish Sauce Comics. I think was. Oh, that's a weird. That's a weird name for a comic shop. Like that doesn't make. That sounds like a seafood restaurant. Um. <laughs> yeah. No, they must just be. Yeah, they mu- they must now just be an eBay store. But yeah, yeah, no, that's that's it. Yeah. No, stay away from them, folks. I for guess. sure. That's pretty much it. But yeah, you know, like you're always risking stuff for. I mean, there's a lot of things you gotta like. Be careful on like one scalpers, two, you know, people with unknown background as sellers on the internet, and you just don't know. And you know, just gotta be careful and be thoughtful. And I know it's it comes down to your money, and that you know, like awesome shout out to the pe- uh, the admins at neotech who we follow did a great job uh, rectifying the situation and more but yeah i mean it's like this it's funny how much you have to go through as a collector because at least you know companies like hasbro are fighting scalpers and and price gouging and, and stuff like that where they're making it harder for these guys to really take advantage and like it's not even just scalpers but like you see people like one they figure switch where it's like here's an old version of like like it's like they replace a Spider-Man figure with a uh, like a 1999 uh, Shocker figure, and they're like oh, this isn't the right figure, or swap build a figure parts and stuff like that. I mean, it's like so low. It's like, come on, people, get a grip, you know. Anything else to add? Not that I can think no. of. All right, I think that'll wrap up our episode, Talking Toys episode 14, uh, which is pandemic on small businesses and collectors, such as selling scams. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe to our Facebook and YouTube pages. Like, comment, subscribe. Spread the word. Uh, the toy community. Just kind of just kind of spread the word. Uh, start up the conversation. If you have an opinion on any of the topics we talked about or any of the new releases we talked about today, feel free to comment in the comment section below. The, if you need to find our channel on YouTube, it's Talking Toys EP. If you need to type that in, that's how you'll find it. You could watch all our past episodes. And you can also watch our new shorts that we released as well. Find us on Facebook as well. As well, you can like, comment, subscribe, get engaged. Also on our Facebook page, we post like new releases of Legos, new releases of Marvel Legends, new releases of any toy that's coming out, hot toys and stuff, anything like mostly popular or collectible uh, for adults and stuff like that. That concludes our episode. I'm Brock Lauer. I'm Kyle Walters. And always stay safe and sanitized.